Is it your own business? It is, yes. So I've been working for myself for about three years now. Previously worked in HR in big corporate companies and various different industries. And then a couple of years ago decided to work with smaller growing companies that Mm. didn't have their own in-house HR director or or manager and work with them to have the variety of of lots of different organisations to work with. I did wonder if you'd had that corporate training yes a big corporate background i think you have to because you learn from other people it's like any job Mm. and if you've not had the exposure to lots of different ways of doing things and then when you then work with the smaller companies and you're putting things in place for the first time you don't have the pool of different ideas to pull from Mm. and are you on your own or do you have other people working with you or for you it's mainly me Mm. i've got an assistant who helps me out with some of the hr activities that come up most often and admin and that kind of thing so that i can concentrate on what i'm doing rather than worrying about my expenses receipts and such (laughs) Uh, and i've got a few specialists that i work with so as a specialist recruiter who helps me out with that because you need to be so on top of it it's not something that you can do effectively as part of a wider thing, yeah. I don't think. And I, I wondered how you'd uh, coped with what you th- when you moved out of a big corporate environment where you get everything done for you, lots of people to do different things, and all of a sudden you do everything. How do you cope with that? I think finding other people and resources that you can go to. I did a lot of networking when I started, partly to find what there was a market for and check that my understanding of it was correct, and partly just to meet other people to give you some of those lessons. There's a lot of trying to assign my work. When am I being the HR consultant and when am I being the finance director of my company and when am I being the marketing person? And perhaps the tidier upper, the cleaner. Yes. All those things. All of that fun. Yeah. Uh, do you work from home or you've got an office? I work from home a lot of the time and there's a couple of co-working spaces that I use when I just need a bit of sanity and some other people to talk things through with and to get away from the washing up distracting me. Uh, you mentioned networking. What kind of networking do you do most small businesses? There's quite a few network groups in Marlow and uh, around here in High Wycombe. Are you members of those? Yeah, I've tried a lot of different things and I think different companies find and different personalities find groups that work for them. Yeah. Now, I do quite quite a few of the chamber events. I meet some interesting people to give me an idea of what my target customers, to use the horrible phrase, are, ah, are looking at. We might at. come on to that. Yes. We might talk about that. <laughs> so your target customers, um, who are they? Who, who, who are you really looking for? It tends to be organisations with sort of between five and 50 employees. They... Mm grown to a certain point where they've sort of put things together to that stage and then suddenly find that it's got into a bit of a mess or or they're needing to take a more reasoned approach on things and need some external input to that. What sort of what sort of um, issues do they come to an expert um, an external like yourself what what sort of issues do they come with is it all employment law can we fire this person can we get away with this amount of salary is that what it's about? Can we fire this person is worryingly one of the things that <laughs> most people will often... That will set HR. The f- can, yes. is, it, is it can we or is it how do we? <laughs> uh, sometimes a bit of both. I think that's one of the things that people are nervous about. So that's mm. the point at which they think, actually, I could do with some external input on this. Mm. But often when you then start having the conversations, there are other elements that are far more important and far more wide-reaching that they can then build on and see how can they stop themselves from getting into that situation in the first place next time. Right. From the the sound of it, um, people come to you when there's a problem. Should they be coming to you before there's a problem? Should they be having procedures and policies and stuff in place? Or is that just the ideal world that we never live in? That's the ideal world that we live in sometimes, and this is quite a good time of year for it. I often find around this time of year people are looking at their plans for 2017, they're thinking about what they're doing in their business as a whole. Mm. And when I do get those calls and something, I'm trying to work out where I'm going and what I'm doing and what do I need to do from an HR perspective to get there. It's often when people are going through that kind of process on a wider basis.